Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. You might have heard of an idea that when we're serving, we're hitting up on the ball or we're swinging up towards the ball. And that's a little bit confusing because you might think that if we swing up towards the ball, then the ball will go up. That's not really the case. And I'm going to give you a simple explanation right now and then we're going to go a little bit deeper into that. So the simple explanation is this. If I just simulate my surf and I just say I'm going to pretend I'm going to throw the racket upwards and I do like this, so I'm really feeling that my swing, you know, swing direction is upward. You can see that even though I'm going upwards, at some point my racket is pointing forward and it's even pointing downward at some point. So that's because my arm is attaching my shoulder and even though I'm, I'm generating a lot of speed upwards, eventually it will come around and my racket is going to maintain the speed that I've generated. So that's how we actually are able to serve the ball downwards even though we're swinging upwards. It's because we don't hit the ball at this point in the swing which would really make the ball go up but we hit the ball a little bit further in front when the racket is starting to point downwards. So even though I'm swinging upwards, the ball is actually going downwards. Now you may ask yourself, all right, why do I need to accelerate upwards then? Why don't I just hit the ball downwards? The main reason is because we need some distance to generate speed. If we have short distance, from when we're starting to accelerate, we cannot reach a lot of speed because we have just a little space and we're gonna just start generating speed and then we're gonna make contact. So that's, that's not a good way to generate speed of the racket head. If we want to generate more speed, we need more distance. And so that's why we're using this distance that's actually upwards because it still helps us generate speed and a split second after I'm going upwards, I'm actually going downwards once my racket reaches the top of the swing. And so I've just used this distance, this space that I have, to really accelerate the racket fast. Now if I just think logically, which is what most recreational players do, they're thinking very logically, what makes sense, they're thinking, here's the ball, I need to bring the racket behind the ball or even above the ball and then I need to hit it down very fast. So if I'm just thinking that, then my serve would probably look like this. Right? And that's a very familiar sight. And what we see here is that, you know, there's no drop and so on. And so the reason why there's no drop is because you're just thinking, I need to get behind the ball and then generate speed. So you're basically wasting all this space that you have to generate racket head speed. So that's reason number one why we're accelerating upwards. Reason number two is because when we're tossing the ball, the ball is actually falling a little bit. For most of us, the ball is falling and if I just show like this, if the ball is falling and it hits my racket, even though I'm just going forward, the ball is going to go down. So somehow I need to counter this gravity, this falling of the ball that's coming to my racket and I'm countering that gravity by going a little bit up on the ball because my swing up even though when I'm tilted slightly I'm still going a little bit up on the ball it helps me lift the ball above the net and then the third reason which is what I just mentioned a little bit why we're swinging upwards is because even when we're hitting the ball flat we're actually not hitting it completely flat we're still slightly spinning the ball. So professionals spin the ball still really fast even when they hit flat. But for most of us there is a little element of spinning of the ball and that still gives us much more control of the ball rather than hitting the ball completely flat. So when we're accelerating the racket upwards and even though we're thinking I'm gonna hit the ball flat we still impart a little bit of the top spin or side spin and that gives us better control of the ball. I said we're going to go a little bit deeper into this idea of how we have to hit up to make the ball go down. 
So this is the part where it gets very interesting. And so it might seem to you that when we're hitting the ball and you're seeing a lot of this, you know, pronation pictures or, you know, high elbow and so on, you might think that, okay, the player is approaching the ball, they're swinging upwards, all right, and then the way to make the ball go down is to actually pronate. That's not the case. That's just how it looks like. The actual case is, is very strange and when in reality we're actually making contact with the ball or at least the pros are they're making the contact with the ball when the racket has not even reached the straight position i'm just going to call this a straight position so when the racket is aligned with the head so not only they are not hitting the ball on the way down they're actually hitting the ball on the way up and you might say well how is that possible well it's possible because we toss the ball in the court so if I'm just standing upright and I'm in th at this position, you will say, well, you're, if I hit the ball now, this ball is going up. But if I toss the ball inside the court and I lean into the court and I'm, and I'm slightly tilted, now my racket is actually also pointing slightly down. So this is the main idea. That is how we hit the ball down. So we do not hit the ball down with our hand. That's very important to know. We do not hit the ball down with our hand. When we make contact with the ball, it basically feels that we're hitting slightly upward or generally it feels that we're hitting the ball straight. So to me, personally, it feels like I'm hitting the ball straight. So if I'm not tossing the ball inside the court and I'm just making contact with the ball, to me it feels I'm swinging straight. So when I toss the ball inside the court, I'm not thinking down because now I'm already tilted. You can see that, you know, if my arm is aligned well with my body and I'm about to make contact with the ball, you can see that my racket is now tilted already. It's pointing down. So if I hit down even more, you can see how close the racket now is. So this will never cross the net. And so that is the main idea which is very confusing when you're watching the serve because it doesn't make sense at first glance. We're going to analyze Milos Raonic's serve in slow motion to better illustrate the idea as I just mentioned. I'd like to thank Jorge Capestani for letting me use one of his slow motion videos for this analysis. Please check his YouTube channel with many more videos of pros hitting in slow motion. Let's take a look at Milos' swing path upwards so that you can see how long it actually is. This long distance of the swing allows him to build more speed by the time he hits the ball. And you can also clearly see that he's swinging upwards. Let's now try and answer the question of why you don't trust swinging up towards the ball. And I mean really swinging up as if you want to throw the racket really far and high. So I've stopped Milos at the contact point from which he now directs the ball down towards the service box. The downwards angle is not so obvious, but in the next frame it becomes more obvious that this ball is going down. The ball has already left the racket though, so it was directed down in those five thousandths of a second when it was in contact with the racket in the previous frame. Since this video is shot at 29 frames per second, every frame I show you has a time difference of 3.5 hundredths of a second approximately. Now let's take a look at one frame before contact and see where would the ball go if Milos made contact 3.5 hundredths of a second earlier. As you can see, it would definitely go outside of the tennis court he's on. And if we go one more frame before that, which is 7 hundredths of a second before contact, then this ball would go into outer space. So let's now recap the whole serve from the deepest racket drop to just before contact. First you're swinging upwards towards the ball and generating a lot of speed going upward. And then 7 hundredths of a second before contact, it feels that the ball would go into outer space. And then 3.5 hundredths of a second, it feels it would go over the back fence on the other side of your court. And once the racket aligns properly to the ball 3.5 hundredths of a second later, the ball does actually start to go downwards. No wonder you don't trust this process as we're not able to tell the difference of a few hundredths of a second. It is really true that just a few hundredths of a second before contact, 
it does feel that you're going to hit up and far over the service box. That's how challenging and demanding a proper high-level service. But it gets even more interesting. Milos is literally serving up, at least that's how it feels to his hand. Here's why. If we look at his hand position at contact, and even one frame after contact when the ball has left the racket, his hand is still open. He has not even reached the alignment with his forearm, not to mention actually closing his hand, which to most of us tells that we are directing the ball downwards. When he does start to close his hand down, the ball is already far away. So it is not with his hand that he directs the ball down, which is what you're probably thinking as you see so many pictures of players ending their serves with a high elbow and the racket pointing down. So you assume that it is through this movement that we direct the ball downwards. But as you can see, this move happens way after the ball has left the racket. In fact, Milos is making contact with the ball when his hand is open, which to most of us feels that the ball is going up. I've rotated the video to the point where Miller's body would be upright, so that we can see how his arm and hand feel to him at contact point. So if Miloš was not leaning into the court, but was standing upright, and he made contact with the ball in exactly the same way, the ball would literally very steeply go up in the sky. You can see from his open hand that he's literally hitting up on the ball, and not in any way directing it down with his hand. That's how it feels to his hand, because his hand does not know that Miller's body is at an angle when he's making contact with the ball. Most of us would like to feel a closed hand, being aware that we are directing the ball down with the racket face, but that's not how we will develop a more advanced serving technique, which by now you realize is even more mysterious than you thought. So how does Miller send the ball down if he's swinging up and literally hitting the ball up with an open hand? He does it by leaning into the court, therefore tilting his body which consequently affects the angle of the racket. We align the racket downwards not with our hand, but with our body. To our hand and arm it does feel that we swing up and that we will hit the ball up, but that feel is deceiving because the hand is not aware that its foundation, which is the body, is angled in space. So what you need to do is to take a leap of faith first, toss the ball inside the court, and simply swing up as if you really want to hit up. And you will realize that even though it feels you're hitting up, the ball does not go up and in fact does go down. 